time this afternoon. Everybody, uh, uh, my name is Renato Sabadini and I'm the CEO of All Digital, the European Federation of Center of Digital Competence. I'm here today, uh, today with Fiona Fanning of CertiPort, Andrew Griggs of, of uh, uh, Prodigy Learning, uh, UK and Ireland, and Peter Robinson, based in Sweden for Lexicon, and they are covering Sweden, Norway, and Denmark. Welcome, everybody. A pleasure to have you here. Thank we you. Conducting these interviews in the framework of uh, the All Digital Week, which is a week in the year, but this time, this year, we prolonged it, where we basically invite members and non-member organization to advertise uh, whatever initiative they're doing at the local or national level related to uh, the acquisition of digital competences or the discussion in general of digital competences. This year is of course extraordinary because of the coronavirus crisis and so in a sense uh, this week is really uh, what it is supposed to be about that is the ability to take advantage uh, of uh, digital competences in the in the most effective manner to reach as many people uh, as possible but it is also a, a challenge and so i would like to start uh, with fiona because uh, uh, fiona works for certiport which is our sponsor our, and the main partner in the in the old digital week for the uh, at least the second time i'm i'm new in all digital but i know that uh, CertiPort has already supported in the past the, uh, the old digital week. Uh, not many members or people in general may know exactly what CertiPort is. So I'm happy to hand you over the floor and to let us know what CertiPort does and how you are coping in these difficult uh, circumstances. Thank you very much, Renato, and thanks for hosting uh, this video call as well and for moving All Digital Week fully online this year. I think it is a very fitting and appropriate response for, for our current times and an excellent initiative on your part. So thank you to you and all the team for doing that. Um, CertiPort is an organization that is dedicated to helping people succeed through certification. So we provide globally recognized credentials that essentially prepare people for life and employment and success in a digital world. We both uh, develop and deliver our own certification programs such as IC3 and ESB, as well as work with internationally recognized IT vendors such as Microsoft, Apple, Adobe, Easy Council, Unity, and many others to deliver their programs through our, our network. We offer a, uh, what we call a, a full pathway of learn, practice, and certify. So the learning materials, the practice tests, and then the certification exams for, <clears throat> excuse me, for a range of digital skills. So it's for students and teachers and citizens right the way up to the more advanced kind of entry level IT pro um, skills. So it's basic digital competence, it's work ready skills, office productivity skills, programming skills, cybersecurity, digital skills for teacher, cloud skills, as well as entrepreneurship and business communication. So quite a, a, a range of skills. Um, we deliver our programs through um, an extensive network of national partners in Europe. Uh, together with Pearson View, we provide about 15 million exams every year through 20,000 test centers around the world in about 180 countries, so, so quite extensive. And as you say, these are really uh, crazy and exceptional times at the moment. We know from UNESCO that around 91% of the world's student population is outside of their normal learning environment. That's about one and a half billion students. Um, so at CertiPort, of course, we're committed to ensuring that learning and testing can continue uh, in these, these difficult times in a way that allows everyone to stay safe and to stay at home um, and still advance their progress to ensure that they're accessing quality and recognized uh, global programs. So there's two really cool things that I want to point to that we're doing. Uh, the first is that we have exceptionally offered free access to our learning solutions and practice tests 
these are web-based solutions, including video courses and online practice tests that enable students to keep learning and to keep preparing for uh, their certification, even though they're not in their, their normal learning environment. Uh, the second uh, thing that we're doing, um, and I'm thrilled to be able to share that we have a home-based solution that allows for administered exams that can be taken by students in their own home. Um, this is an Azure-based solution and we're calling it CertiPort Exams from Home. Um, essentially, uh, this is uh, it basically it just allows students to continue to pursue industry-recognized certification. Um, it's currently in an advanced pilot phase, we'll call it. Uh, we're rolling it out around the world in the past few weeks and it's been tremendously successful. Um, we have already 10,000 students who have scheduled to take their exams from home. Um, we're now working to roll out different language versions and scale-up delivery around the world. And of course, none of this is possible without our partners. For us, they're the front line in ensuring continuity and great experiences um, for learners and for test candidates, even in these crazy times. Um, and as I said, we work with our national partners, and I'm thrilled to have um, Peter and Andrew here today, two of our national partners, who will be able to, to tell us a bit more in detail and in practice how things are working in their national context. Thank you. Thank you very much, Fiona. It's really uh, very interesting and I think very, uh, very important to hear this kind of work, especially in these times. And uh, voila, the floor now goes, uh, let's say, first to Andrew, then Peter, I'm going alphabetically here. So um, if you could tell us briefly what your organization does at the, at the national level or, or of the many countries that you are dealing with and how you are coping and how you are working with the kind of circumstances we find ourselves in. Andrew. Perfect, thanks Renato and um, thanks Fiona as well. It's a fantastic introduction to the CertiPort business. Um, Prodigy Learning, we are a digital skills and certification specialist business. Our, um, our core business is centered around um, CertiPort and being the, the, the national CertiPort partner across the UK and Ireland. Um, our model is very similar to, to CertiPort across, um, across their, their main territory in the US. Um, where we would go out and work nationally in, in both those countries to support um, and, uh, and deliver those certification programs across the network of test centres. For us, those test centres predominantly sit within education. So we, we're probably 80% um, in the schools, college, university um, and, and apprenticeship space um, and around about 20% in the corporate commercial and public sector training space where we're working with organisations to support programmes um, across um, you know, a multitude of, of, of different uh, objectives, um, including things like um, in the prison service and, and NHS in the UK, which, um, you know, are important at the moment. Um, for us, uh, for us at the moment, we've seen obviously a huge, huge um, change in the UK from uh, obviously classroom-led delivery to, um, to at-home delivery, remote delivery. With, uh, with schools, colleges, and, and you know, multiples of organizations uh, actually closing and with the lockdown situation at the moment, um, which has led to you know, a, lot, a lot of challenges for the, the, the organizations that we typically would work with. Um, most of those organizations hadn't previously been set up um, or in, in some cases were on a small scale set up for remote learning and remote delivery. Um, so you know, the last, last three, four weeks we've had the um, majority of our customers having to move um, whole scale operations, school businesses and, and commercial organizations to remote delivery, remote learning. Um, and that provides a number of challenges. That provides a huge um, challenge to teachers uh, in, in ways that they've not had to deal with before. Typically, most delivery would be, would be synchronous, um, either in class um, with direct feedback from student to teacher and vice versa. Um, and many are now relying on, on parents or, or asynchronous learning where Students have left their own devices to go through um, content and programs um, and, and a lot of the organisations aren't necessarily set up with the correct tools or the right way of being able to monitor and track and report on how learners are progressing, what they're doing and what they're achieving. And they're relying on, um, you know, some, some very kind of rudimentary feedback. Um, one of the things we've, we've done is support, um, support some of the offers that CertiPort themselves have, have pushed worldwide across our territories. So we've offered... Um, free access to the video learning content um, and to the practice test and some of the resources to, to our customer base 
um, through the current situation. And uh, the main reason for doing that is um, not only providing some of the, I guess, the, the, the world leading or market leading content in a number of well branded uh, programs, but um, it, it's to provide the tools in the background that help the teaching and the learning process. Um, so a number of those solutions uh, that we're, we're providing, particularly the video learning, have um, quite extensive reporting tools that allow the teachers and the learners to um, set the relevant video learning for the, for the individuals, but most importantly, to be able to monitor and track uh, progress and see how the students actively progressing. Um, embedding that with some of the assessments and the skills analysis within that allows them to then have various checkpoints along the stage of learning where they can actually see the students going through the course that are completing questions and answers um, and actually achieving along the way. Um, you know, I was, I was delighted this week to be able in, in our office to um, actually demonstrate and test locally the, um, the, the at-home testing solution that, that Fiona mentioned, which worked fantastically well. And um, I have to credit our colleagues and, and partners in CertiPort for um, a really quick turnaround in, in producing um, what is a, a, a fantastic at-home solution. Again, moving them on from traditional in-class proctored controlled exams to now at-home delivery. Um, which is now going to enable us to offer uh, an additional facet to our customers, which is going to be um, assessing learners and students at home, which, which is incredible, to be honest with you. So not only can we now provide access to um, learning content, video learning practice tests for, for supporting some of the assessment, um, but we can now also make sure that students are still achieving um, you know, worldwide recognised credentials and certifications um, to, to add on to their uh, their own learning um, track record, their own CVs and uh, um, uh, their own portfolios. Um, and uh, to, um, to be able to do that, I think is, is, is fantastic and important, particularly when, if I look at local news here in the UK, um, the UK government have, uh, they're, they're not able to test uh, the, the traditional GCSEs or A-levels remotely with learners. Um, you know, they're having to rely on, on teacher assessment and analysis over the last two years of, of teaching and supporting those individual students uh, to give to give appropriate grades, and you know, there's um, you know to, to be able to sit here and say that we can still assess and test learners, I think is fantastic. So um, you know, I'm, I'm proud of, of, of what we as a partner organisation can now deliver across um, the UK and Ireland. Thank you, thank you very much, Andrew. And uh, Peter, uh, you are uh, the one of us who is in a stranger situation because uh, you deal with three countries. Uh, Norway and Denmark are in some sort of restriction similar to the rest of Europe, but Sweden is not. So how, what can you say also, apart from the work of your organization, but how can you say, what can you say, say about that uh, different situation? Yes, um, thank you. And um, uh, I'll, I'll try to add some of the things uh, which uh, uh, wasn't said before. Um, it's, it's true we cover both Sweden, Denmark and Norway, but our business is uh, based in Sweden. We're a training provider with the biggest training partner in Sweden. We have 30 odd locations uh, and our main customer, I would say that's the corporate business, which covers around 40%. And then we have uh, public employment services where we, um, we well, we train uh, uh, workforce and develop them within the IT skills. So for us, uh, being able to to have access to these learning tools and, and uh, e-learning that we get through as a partner with Cersiport, we've been able to adopt to uh, the government's restrictions because they closed down uh, all all uh, above the age of 16. Every school or every training had to to do it from home. For us, that wasn't a big problem because we were quite used to it. We've been doing a live webinar and remote learning for quite some time. But for the schools, uh, it was a, a big transition. And what we've been trying to do is, is uh, help them with curated content and better learning materials that they had before. And also being able to give the students um, labs and, and uh, exercises to do. Otherwise time that there's nothing to do for the student if they haven't got enough of labs and, and exercises to do. 
uh, in terms of not having a lockdown, I would say that we have we have recommendations to stay at home, to work from home if possible, and most organisations they they well they they take the training that's planned and put it in the future. So for us, it's been a big blow. Uh, and what we're doing is trying to work with these organizations and, and show them how to deliver and, and use remote learning. And with the tools that we now have from SearchPoint, that, that gives us a bigger opportunity to keep working instead of going, well, going down with the crisis. Yeah. Very good. Um, I move to, uh, to, to questions. Um, for all the three of you, actually, um, you're dealing like us in, from a different angle with digital competence. Uh, and and uh, so in a way, we are perhaps amongst the organization that we're most uh, prepared for this kind of uh, contingency, even though nobody expected it to this scale. But nevertheless, this has been going on now for quite some time. So what kind of lessons have you learned or are you learning in, in the way you work and operate in these days that you will keep uh, once the situation goes back to a semblance of normality? Um, I don't know, Fiona, would you like to? Well, so my, my focus is primarily European policy, so maybe I can answer that question from the perspective of European policy, if that's okay. Um, I think it, one of the things that has, has become apparent to me during this, this crisis is that digital skills and access to digital services really are no longer optional. You know, we know that there are statistics in Europe where it's recognized that 42% of European don't even have basic skills. And the fact that we have accepted that up to now is, um, you know, is one thing. But I think as we look to the future, we have to realize that that is just simply no longer an option. We have a political imperative, an economic imperative, and a kind of moral imperative to ensure that we bring these people with us. It is, it is truly a digital age, and this crisis has pushed more and more services and opportunities into the digital world and I think we really from a political perspective we need to look very seriously at how we address those 40 42 percent of the European population it's, it's no longer acceptable from from my perspective we really need to bring these with us and I suppose this also underlines the importance of campaigns like all digital week I mean the, the work that's done in getting people um, online and getting people skilled is really important and I think we need to we need to scale up our efforts massively um, to ensure that we don't have an even greater divide in the future. Thank you. Uh, Peter. Uh, yes, I, I agree with Fiona and the lesson we're learning is that we, we, we really need to think about the, the student or the, the, the person behind that's taking in all the learning and uh, are, they, are they really ready to use all the technology have they got the right accounts? Can they handle the technology that is needed to, to join uh, remote learning? Uh, so, so we're looking in how to, how can we prepare students to be able to attend remote learning and work from home? Can they actually handle all the, the stuff that's needed? Thank you. Andrew? Um, I think just to add to what Peter said, I agree completely with, with, with what he's mentioned there, but I suppose on a, um, on a local classroom level, um, the biggest lesson I think we're going to learn from the current situation is um, that, that remote learning, remote resources are more readily available, more accessible, um, and we'll probably see um, a decline in, in uh, you know, printed classroom content versus, versus online digital. Um, and you know it's it's transitioning customers which typically would have led courses in a um, you know traditional instructor or classroom led fashion. Um, it's supporting them to to also be able to support remote delivery. I, I would see the continuation, hopefully, um, of remote delivery of, of, of learning for a number of courses and programs that we offer. 
uh, and it's about supporting the, the teachers, the educators through this process at the same time to support them with their own learning needs um, so that they're able to continue to support learners. Um, and we don't necessarily fall back into maybe some of the um, some of the methods that we used previously, which uh, there's, there's nothing wrong with, but we just, as, as Fiona said, we're, we're moving further and further into a digital world uh, and it makes absolute sense to start embracing some of the, the, the new ways of learning now. Very good. One last question. Um, again, for the three of you, in the light of uh, so what is happening now and the things that you said, uh, what would you say to those, because there are some, we, we are receiving some emails and messages in the sense, those that fear that uh, while they're happy that uh, the crisis has uh, put um, uh, at the center the need for more, uh, greater ability to teach uh, remotely, there are also those who, steer, uh, who fear, some teachers and so, that uh, this will eventually downplay the role of in-class learning. So what would you say to someone who fears the, 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 um, the gradual move towards the periphery of in-class learning to reassure uh, these people? Uh, Andrew, if you'd like to start. Um, I think it's about just finding the right balance um, between, um, between supporting the learners in, in the traditional sense, but also embracing the digital. Um, you know, there are, there are plenty, of, uh, plenty of people that we've worked with who are still using maybe some of the older uh, methods through textbooks to teach and deliver, but there's no reason why now that infrastructure facilities within schools can be um, brought more up to speed, up to date with, with you know, where technology is at in the workplace and elsewhere, um, and actually start embracing and using more of the digital content within, within teaching and learning. Um, the resources that we have, the video learning, the content we previously mentioned, um, are supported by instructor uh, resources and instructor readiness. So they're designed to be used in class as well as outside of class. There's no reason why um, anyone should fear the change. Um, in, in fact, as I say, we should, we should embrace it and, and look at how we evolve learning to introduce and embed more, more digital content. Thank you. Uh, uh, Peter? Yeah, um, I, I... I agree with the questions they're asking and I, I can share that concern, but I don't think you have to change anything at all because if I'm live in the classroom or I'm there via link, I'm still live. So by not using recorded lessons and by not having two big classes, we can still achieve the same amount of um, discussions and, and support for the students. So if we keep the classes to 15 to 20 to perhaps sometimes 30, I can still see them, they can still speak to me. But if we, if we mean by delivering online and remote learning that uh, an instructor is talking to 500 or 5,000 people, no, it's not the same. And, and I can't see that that's the way we're heading. I think just basically make sure that you can reach any instructor at any time, anywhere, but keep the classes to a normal amount of people and make sure you interact with them. Fiona. Thanks, yeah, I think it is certainly an understandable um, question. Um, from my perspective, ICT or technology is not necessarily an end in itself. It is simply a vehicle and a tool that is there to, to help teachers and it can help them bring learning content to life. It can help them even improve collaboration with their students in a, maybe a different way that, that has been done in the past. Um, but I certainly think it is not something um, that should cause fear. I think it's something that, you know, once understood, can enrich and embellish the learning uh, experience. Um, and maybe I would just um, close by saying that if there are any uh, teachers or educators out there who are feeling fearful and wondering how to approach this to get in touch with, I think any of us on this, on this call and um, we, can, we can help them on their journey um, and uh, hopefully take away, take away any fear for them. Thank you very much. Well, uh, let me also thank you once again, Certiport, for the partnership in this All Digital Week. This 
very first edition of a totally all digital week. We are very proud to have you as partners and we are proud to share with you this commitment for digital learning. And that's my bit. So I would like to thank you, uh, Fiona Fanning, Peter Robinson, Andrew Briggs. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Renato. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys. Thanks. Take care.